The story begins with us right in the middle of a ruined city with everything destroyed in its vicinity. Everywhere we see is chaos and destruction with no indication of how it came about. Right in the middle of this destroyed city, we see Shiroko, our MC, and she is walking around with a mission in mind. She has a gun in her hand and we see her walking towards someone who is on the ground with a tablet in hand. She goes up to this person and raises her gun towards this person, shooting them dead. This is where life has brought MC, and we have yet to find what made all of this become a reality. We see MC getting onto a train and there, she is alone with her sensei. Sensei used to teach her in the school but now with everything like this, there is no school to teach in. MC starts talking to him and tells him how this all came to be. She feels like everything that has happened is because of her mistakes and her choices. She feels like everything that happens is because of the choices you make and nothing else. In her mind, getting this city to the point where it is right now is her fault and only hers. She takes responsibility for this and wants to make up for it now. She tells Sensei that there was a time when he used to tell her and her friends what it is to be a person with responsibility. She never thought about it like this before but now with everything that has happened, she finally understands what he meant by it. She is ready to take responsibility for it all and wants to compensate somehow. Sensei is just sitting and listening to her rant about this. Sensei must be tired out of his mind, and this girl just keeps ranting like this is not gonna help him. MC tells Sensei that she wants his help now as he is the only one who can help her bring about a bright future for this city. She wants to know if he is willing to put in the effort required for it. We get back to the point where it all started. MC gets up early in the morning to get ready for the school. She gets out of bed and goes to the window to look at the view outside. She then gets ready and puts on her uniform. MC takes her bike and starts riding toward a place that seems restricted to visiting but she is going there anyway. We get to know what is happening at the moment in the city. So basically, there is a general student council in the city of Kividos which is deemed to be the city of academies and schools. This general student council handles everything related to these academies, keeping everything in order and going. But for some time now, the president of this student council has gone missing with no idea who might be behind his disappearance. The city is dwelling in chaos and everything is falling apart. For a couple of weeks though, everything is getting back in order because of the Sankram and its highly official duties. We get to the school where NC studies called the Abydos Academy. She gets to school and we see all her friends heading to the school as well. Getting together in a room, NC tells everyone that she went to see the restricted industrial area of Kivodos to see what it is about. Serika is shocked to hear this because she knows that MC has a bike and she rode to the far out part of the city. It must be many kilometers and this is what makes her very astonished. She asks MC why she went there. MC tells her that she wanted to check it out for some reason and just did it. We see Ayane here as well and she is holding the tablet we saw at the beginning. She is the analytical and the smart one of the group and she finds this very interesting. Anyways, everyone starts talking about their weekend and what they did on the weekend. Ayane asks Serka what she did on the weekend. Serika starts tweaking, not wanting to tell them what she did. She makes up a story and says that she was at the library. Ayane was at the library too, so she was surprised she did not see Serika there. Serika's lie is clear, but she plays it well here. She asks Hoshino what she did on the weekend so the spotlight can get off her. Hoshino is taking a nap on the table and is very sleepy. She gets her head up to tell her that she just napped all the time during the weekend and nothing else. They then ask Nanami what she did on the weekend. Nanami is a rich person so she just went shopping and got all of the stuff. She even got 40 dumbbells for some reason. Anyways, the regular meeting starts and ANA kicks it off with the subject of the student council president missing. She reports that because of this, a number of autonomous schools are going into chaos with no idea how to handle it. Nanomi brings up the topic of the treaty between the two academies and whether that has been completed yet or not. Ayane tells her that it has not been completed because the initiator of the treaty, the president of the student council missing. The treaty is at a halt right now and cannot go forward because of this. Everyone knows that the general student council is at its very low because of the president missing, and they may not be free to do these kinds of things. They already have a lot on their plates for now, so they might be focusing on the important things. Serika also brings up the Kaka Kaka gang and that it has been causing trouble around the city for some reason. Ayane tells them that they need supplies but because of the situation Kivodos is in, it is very difficult to provide such supplies and things of need. The meeting is over and we see a van pull up to the Abido school with a reminder of the debt these girls have to pay. 
They took a loan from this company and this company comes out here every month to remind them of it. The loan that these girls took was a lot and according to their calculations, is going to take them around 309 years and 2 months to pay the debt. The van leaves telling them that they will come out here again next month, but MC reminds them that it is still going to take them this much time, no matter how many times they come here. The day is over and everyone is headed back. MC goes back to her home and getting there, she just sits on her bed reading the group chat. Serika seems really pulled back for some reason these days, but MC ignores it. We see a train pulling up to the station and a guy gets off of it. It is the sensei we saw at the start of talking to NC. The next day, NC gets up and gets ready to head to the school. As she bikes towards the school, we see a group of helmet goons trying to scare off and fight a group of girls with heavy machine guns. The group of girls roasts the leader of the helmet group saying that his hairstyle of out of trend. It does not look good on him and this pisses him off. He orders his soldiers to take these girls out. The soldiers start shooting at the girls, but nothing hits them. Every bullet they shoot is useless, and there is no damage. The girls get their turn, and now, they point their machine guns towards these soldiers, blasting them with everything they have. MC rides past this scene of destruction as if this is a daily occurrence. As she rides further, she is on a desert road towards the school, where she finds someone passed out in the middle of the road. It is Sensei, and he got a heat stroke because of the heat in this city. MC stops to check if he is alive and offers him some water. Getting back to his senses, MC tells her that he wants to go to her school, and that is the reason he was walking on this road. Sensei tags along with MC, and she gives him a ride to the school. Getting there, MC brings Sensei to the meeting room where Sirika, ANA, and Nanami are already present. At first, everyone thought that MC just committed a crime and kidnapped this poor fella, but she cleared it out that he was a guest who wanted to come here so she just gave him a ride. Why would she kidnap someone and bring that person to her friends? Confused, Serika asks him who is he and what he wants from them. Sensei introduces himself and tells them that he is from the General Investigation Division, Shale, and is here because of the ongoing investigation. Hearing that he is from the General Student Council, everyone gets very happy and they finally have some hope of getting supplies and their needs met. INA is pretty hyped up about it. Serika wants to tell Hoshino about this as quickly as she can, but she is not around. INA tells her that Hoshino must be sleeping where she normally does every day on the roof of the building. Serika runs to get Hoshino so she can meet this sensei. Serika goes out and sensei explains what happened on the way. He tells them that he knew about Kivoto's being a desert district, but he never imagined the kind of heat he experienced here. He never knew he could get a heat stroke, but he did and passed out right in the middle of the road. MC changes the topic and introduces her whole group to Sensei. She tells him that Sirika is a first-year student, Nanomi is a second-year student and Ana is a first-year student as well. MC herself is a second-year student while Hoshino is the president of this task force. Their task force is called the Foreclosure Task Force of this Abido school. We see Sirika bringing Hoshino towards the room and Hoshino is sleepy as usual. She comes into the room and introduces herself not knowing who is standing in front of her. Anyway, with the introduction out of the way, MC tells Sensei that she will be showing him around the school as he needs to see everything before settling in. She takes Sensei on a walk around the school and shows him just how rough they have it here. She tells him that the desertification of the Abido school is very serious and they have to do something about it. The school has been like this since she came here. She never saw any other students here other than the five of them. Sensei is really surprised to hear this and wants to know the reason behind it. MC explains that this school is in a really big debt and they cannot pay it off as is. They are working their butts off trying to make sure that the debt is paid. They get commissions as a task force and they are slowly paying the debt but the speed they are going is really slow and it would take forever to pay the debt. This is really serious for them as they have nowhere else to go and they want to protect the school no matter what. Everywhere you see, there is sand, and there is nothing they can do about it. MC shares the story when one time she and others went to clean the gym. They were pretty excited about it, but when they went in, the amount of trash they saw was unfathomable. They never thought there would be this much dirt in there and they left it as it is. Sensei is surprised to hear everything about this school and wants to get into deep details about it. MC takes Sensei to a room and shows him around. This empty room was idle for a long time as no one needed it, but from now on, it is Sensei's room. She asks Sensei if this room is enough for him. Sensei finds this room big enough for himself and thanks MC for it. 
Sensei stops and asks MC one thing very seriously. Why does she want to protect this school? MC thinks about it long and hard and tells him that she wants to protect this school because this is where they belong and she is never leaving this place. Sensei knew the answer exactly and that is what he got. Suddenly, we hear gunshots and the window shattering. A gang has come to get this school from the foreclosure task force and they are not leaving until they do. This is the Kata Helmet Gang and they are notorious for being really strong. Nanomi and others get their guns and get ready to take them on before they come in and take their school from them. They are running low on ammunition so it is going to be really hard for them to deal with this and drive them away. MC takes out her gun as well and jumps out of the window to deal with them head on. Sensing knows what he has to do so he gets his tablet out and is ready to help them any way he can. The gang gets out of the school with their guns in hands, but one thing keeps them from pushing them away, lack of ammunition. Ayani knows they are going to get their supplies soon and they just have to hold on till then, but no one knows how they are going to do it. Foreclosure Task Force is ready to fight, but they are scared to take the first step as every bullet counts. The Helmet Gang also knows for some reason that they are running low on ammo, so this is really for them. The leader of the Helmet Gang tells them to give up and leave the place immediately before they blast everything to smithereens. MC is not going to give up the school like this so she gets up and starts shooting. A few bullets impact the Helmet Gang, but nothing much happens. Our gang gets up and tries to make a strategy work but nothing works. Their teamwork is terrible, and they are messing up their every move. The Helmet Gang notices this and this gives them a huge boost in confidence that they are going to win no matter what. We see Sensei talking to his tablet calling Arona and saying that he has to do his job as a teacher and help his students in need. The Helmet Gang keeps shooting and the leader keeps throwing grenades so she can drive the foreclosure task force out. Our gang is even more low on ammo now with every bullet they missed. Ayane wants to find an opening so she and others can make some hits on the Helmet Gang, but they are pinned in front of the main door. MC gets up and starts shooting again, but this has no effect. As the Helmet Gang gets ready to take these little girls out, our girls get ready scared as they know they are going to be taken out in one go. Sensei comes out of the school and tells the Helmet Gang that he is the teacher of this school, and he can never let his students fail. The leader of the Helmet Gang is shocked to see someone beside these girls, especially a man. The teacher asks the Helmet Gang to leave this place kindly, but they don't listen and get ready to launch the final attack. Sensei comes forward and asks his students why they want to protect this place. MC gets up and tells him that she wants to protect because this is where they belong and they are never going to leave this place. Sensei asks others if they think the same and they do. Then he shows them the way it is done and how a team works together. They are all pinned and now it is time for Sensei to show off his skills. He tells everyone that they have to come out and face them head on. Everyone agrees and comes forward with guns in hand. They all run and try to dodge every bullet finally coming in front of the last two tanks. The Helmet Gang feels like they have won as the foreclosure task force is right in front of them without any cover, but they have got it wrong. They are missing one person, and that is Serica. She is in a building nearby ready to take the shot. Ayane releases the bomb from her drone right on these tanks. Serica takes the shot and hits the bomb right when it reaches the tanks, blasting them out of vision and claiming victory. The foreclosure task force has once again won against the Helmet Gang. Serika comes out from the building to her gang. Sensei thanks Serika for doing this. Serika tries to act tough, but she gives in, thanking Sensei and calling him a Sensei. He is glad that her students are all well and alive. Once again, Sensei's strategy skills have worked as he had hoped, and they are one step closer to becoming the greatest teacher pupil team. Then we see a girl sitting in a chair like she is the head of something truly notorious organization. In the room, there are three other girls present and they have huge guns in their hands. There is a phone on the desk which suddenly starts ringing. The girl in the chair picks up the phone and starts talking. She introduces herself saying she is from the Problem Solver 68 and her name is Aru. Aru just got a call due to some service need and she explains what kind of services she and her team provides. She says that she can deal with people with heavy backgrounds or with armed groups, etc. The other person on the line needs something important done and they feel like only the Problem Solver 68 can do it. The job is here and Aru assures them that their important task will be completed without any hassle and they should not worry about anything now. With this, she hangs up the call and lets her soldiers know of the job they just got. Back to our gang and we see them all gathered up in the meeting room as usual. There, everyone is focused on something that is in the middle of the table right in front of them. 
This is something they found in one of the armed vehicles of the Helmet Gang. MC asks ANA what this is and how is this of any use to them. INA explains that they got this while fighting the Katakad Helmet Gang, and this thing is of great importance due to the fact that this is all illegal stuff. They have no idea how they got this illegal stuff, but it cannot be using normal conventional methods. Some feel like they could have gotten this from the black market, but ANA does not think so. She knows getting this kind of stuff from the black market is easy, but she also knows that this much amount is just really too much for the black market even. There is no way in hell they got this from the black market. There must be some other source and they have to find out what it is. Sensei hears everything and he knows that if they can find where they got this stuff from, they can easily track who is behind the Helmet Gang. Ayane agrees and she adds that they can also get to know why the Helmet Gang is after their school. It makes no sense for the Helmet Gang to keep attacking the school leaving every other school behind so that is something to look out for as well. With this out of the way, Ayane lets everyone know that the meeting is about to start, and today, Sensei is also going to be part of the meeting as he is now an essential part of this task force. Sensei is honored to be at the meeting. The meeting starts and Ayane has a serious and simple question to ask everyone right off the bat. She wants to know if anyone has suggestions about how the future of the foreclosure task force is going to be bright and how they can make the best of everything in the future for their team. She looks at everyone to see if anyone is willing to give any suggestions. Serika gets up and wants to say her part in this. She feels like she is the accountant of the task force and she should have the most say in the matter as they have a lot of debt pay. Ayane and the others are all ears waiting to hear what she has to say. Serika continues, saying that they have been fighting and defeating a lot of bad men and they have done a lot of different missions till now, and yet, they still haven't gotten enough money to pay even a fraction of the debt. Everyone agrees with her as she brings up a good point. Serika feels like they should focus on getting as much money as possible, and for that, she has a suggestion on how they should go about doing that. She takes out a germanium bracelet and tells everyone that this is how they are going to get the money they need. Sensei interrupts her saying that this stuff does not work and is just a fraud. Hearing this shocks the core out of Serika. That is because she has already bought two of them and is wearing them. Seeing how Serika does not have any good suggestions, Ayane moves on to someone else. Hoshino raises her hand and gets up to share her thoughts. She starts by saying that this school is really weak and the reason for it being weak is that there are not enough students. There are only five of them and the teacher and any school's strength and measured by the number of students it has. The point is that they should try and get as many students as they can to transfer here so Abidos is a much stronger school than before. This way they can get more stuff done and thus more money. Everyone agrees with her and applauds her critical and good thinking. They want to know if she has any suggestions on how they should do it. Hashino does and a good one in her opinion. This is not going to be good, I can smell it from a mile away. She says that they should just go and hijack other school buses. Hearing this makes Ayane's heart drop. Hoshino continues, saying that they should hijack the buses and force the students to sign the transfer contract. This way they can have as many students as they can. Ayane stops her mid-sentence, saying that her plan sucks. She knows that doing this is not going to help them as no student is going to do as they say after forcing and threatening them like this. MC agrees and she is next with her suggestion. She feels like they should just go and rob a bank. This again takes Ayane and Sensei by surprise as they were not expecting something like this from MC. MC continues that they should focus on the central bank as she knows the location of the money vault and everything about the guards and other stuff. Ayane again disagrees saying that they are not going to commit any crimes or anything like that. Nanomi has a suggestion and Ayane warns her that it should not be anything criminal or illegal. Nanami knows and assures her that it is not anything like that. Nanomi feels like they should become school idols and have everyone follow them, becoming really famous and rich. This did not land as Nanomi thought it would, getting rejected as well. Ayane feels like Sensei should be the one to make the last decision. Sensei is under a lot of pressure and he starts thinking about which of the suggestions just made is the best one. As he is thinking about it, Ayane stops him as she does not want him to choose any of these illegal or dumb suggestions. She is angry, and no one wants to deal with angry Ayane. We cut to a different scene, and we are in the ocean. A huge ship is sailing by when there is a huge explosion. We see this as the Problem Solver 68, and they are much more likely on their mission than we saw them getting in the start. They make another huge explosion, and they successfully get the thing they need. It is some sort of a cage, and with this, they are on their way back. 
They are on the way back when Mutsuki, Kyoko, and Haruka are sitting in the back of their ride with Aru sitting like a boss. She is the president of Problem Solver 68, so she is really confident and proud. She starts thinking about how this mission was so easy for them, and that they are going to get some more tasks like this. This is when Kyoko takes a look inside the cage, and her reaction is a little concerning. She turns to Aru and asks her if the safety of the target is important during these kinds of missions. She tells Kayoko that it is but she has no idea why is she asking this. Kayoko wants Aru to take a look inside the cage. She looks inside, and we see a cat that is on the verge of dying. Their mission was to save this cat but the condition this cat is in tells us that they did not do their job well. Aru is really concerned and worried now, and with this, we cut to our gang eating ramen at Shibishika Ramen. Serika is serving like usual, and they are here because they made Ayane really angry. She is eating her ramen while others are looking at her making sure she is back to normal. As they are enjoying their food, a customer knocks and is looking through a slit of the door, asking Serika if they have anything cheap here. It is Haruka and she looks really scared for some reason. Serika lets her know that they have normal ramen at 580 yen. Hearing this, Haruka gets back and tells her crew that they finally found something under 600 yen. Aru starts talking cocky and confident once again saying that she knew they would find it and that everything is going according to her expectations. Aru and others come into the restaurant and let Serika know that they will be getting a single bowl of ramen to go. Serika asks them if they would want to sit and eat here, but Aru feels like they should take their food and just leave. Serika offers her to sit and eat as there are a lot of empty seats anyway. Aru likes the way Serika is talking to her and agrees. They all sit and Serika takes their order once again. They let her know again that they just need a single bowl of ramen and that is it. She is shocked to hear that four people are going to eat just a single bowl of soup and confirms if she is sure about it. Haruka gets up in fear and starts telling Serika how they are very poor and they do not have any money on them to pay for the four of them. She keeps ranting about how she is very sorry about this and that this is making her go numb and stuff. Aru tells Haruka to just sit and not bother the waitress. Serika's boss hears Haruka and asks them if they are all students or not. They are and the boss lets them know that money is nothing for them. Mutsuki wants to make it clear that they are not always this poor. It happened this time because of Aru and how she did not make the right judgment during the mission. She is the one who made them poor like this. Aru gets up and starts defending herself, saying that they are surely going to get a good amount of the next mission they have. With this, Serika goes to the kitchen and brings back a single huge bowl of ramen that can feed 10 people at least. Aru and others are shocked to see this huge bowl. Haruka asks Serika if she got the order right because they cannot pay for this huge bowl. Serika assures her that she did not get the order wrong, this is their regular ramen. With this out of the way, Aru and others start eating the ramen and it is delicious as hell. They enjoy the ramen and after finishing it, Nanomi comes to their table with others and tells them that this place serves the best ramen. Aru agrees with this. MC comes forward as she notices their uniforms. She asks Aru if they are from the Gehenna school. They are and right off the bat, Mutsuki notices that MC and others are wearing uniforms of the Abido school. She asks Kayoko if they should tell Aru about it as she is having a good time talking to MC. MC and Aru were hitting it off. Aru tells MC that she is happy to meet like-minded people on her way here. She finds a pretty good meeting and having a chat with fun people. With this, MC and Aru shake hands and Aru leaves with her gang. On the way back, Aru is saying how the ramen was wonderful and how nice those people were when Mutsuki and Kyoko feel like they should let her know who they are. They stop Aru and ask her if she notices their uniforms. She did not and asked Mutsuki why is she asking this. Mutsuki lets her know that those were the students of Ebido's school which is their next target apparently. Hearing this blows away Aru in shock as she never expected this. Haruka asks Mutsuki if she should go and take care of them right here right now, but Mutsuki lets her know that she does not have to. She can show off her skills during the mission. Aru is still in shock having no idea how she just talked nice to her next target. Mustuki tells her that she does not have to worry about anything as they just want the money and they can get out of their hair after the job is done. Seeing Aru's reaction, Mutsuki feels like she is getting really soft and they should think about doing this job or not. Aru does not want to look like a soft-hearted president so she gets back in her character and leaves. This trick always works to push someone like this. A little while after that, our gang is in the meeting room where they let Sensei know about the students of Gehenna school they met a little while ago. 
Sensei is really surprised and happy about it meaning they have made a good relationship with another school. As they are chatting, Ayane notices a signal from the south gate sensor. She got a signal that some armed group if approaching them. Using the camera, she notices that these are some private mercenaries. They get ready to go and fight them. We see Aru and her team talking to these private mercenaries. They paid these mercenaries to fight for them. Aru is getting really confident and cocky, saying that they are going to win the fight no matter what. Our gang arrives here and notices that these are the same students from the Gehenna school they met and treated earlier. They let Sensei know about this but he knows they cannot talk to them seeing how they are armed to the fullest. Serika calls out to Aru saying how ungrateful she is because she treated them with ramen earlier and now they are here to attack them. Mutsuki says that they never mix their personal life and business life. They are here on business and will leave right after they hand their school to them. With this, the battle starts and the private mercenaries start shooting them. Our gang hides and takes cover, getting an opening to shoot and take out some of Aru's soldiers. The fight is going pretty evenly for now and Kyoko is taking on Nanomi alone. She charges up at Nanomi and tries taking her out in close combat, but Serika comes out behind her, telling her to drop her weapon. Kayoko puts her hands up and we see the grenade pin in her finger. The grenade rolls towards Serika and explodes, leaving her a little injured but she is fine. Hoshino and MC are fighting side by side, trying to take on Aru, but she has everything put in place to trap these two. MC goes a little closer to a C4 and it explodes, throwing her toward a claymore mine, making another huge explosion. Aru and her team are handling them pretty well for now and they have our gang pinned at the start of the entrance. This goes on for a while before Sensei uses his plan. Following his plan, Hoshino uses her shield and goes closer to Aru and her gang, making an opening for the rest of her task force to start the counter. Making use of this, MC makes her move and takes a long route, showing up behind Aru. Sensei just literally tells them obvious crap to do. How can they not think about this on their own? MC and Aru are right in each other's faces with their guns pointed at each other. This is a tie for now, and when Aru is about to succeed, the private mercenaries leave saying that they are not paid for overtime. Aru and her gang are loose for now and they retreat. MC was surprised at how strong they were. They know they have to look out for the next time because they might not be that lucky. With this victory, everyone is hungry now and wants to get ramen. They force Sensei to pay for their ramen and they enjoy another victory like this. Poor Sensei cannot even say no to them. Aru is talking to someone on the phone. Meanwhile, Kyoka, Kuromi, and Asagi are silently watching her. After ending the call, Kayoko asks her president if she is going to fight with Abidos again. At this, Asagi points out that they have already used all their money. Apparently, they have rented the office to use it for their work, and that's why they don't have money now. Aru is looking irritated by the situation. Aru makes her decision and states that she is going to apply for a loan. Funnily, Kayoko reminds her that she is on the bank's blacklist, so how is she going to get a loan? At this, Aru embarrassedly replies that her account got frozen because she is wanted. The girl then becomes determined as she announces that she will definitely finish the mission. Let's see if she can actually complete this mission. After some days, a robotic man from the Kaiser loan arrives to take the payment back. Hence, the students hand over the briefcase filled with the cash. The man swiftly takes the money and informs them that he will come back next month. After that, he goes away from there. Takanashi gets relaxed as they finally manage to pay the loan this month. Meanwhile, Nanomi is looking confused, hence she asks them why Kaiser Loan only accepts her payment in cash. Sensei realizes that the girl's point is valid, hence the boy is wondering why the agency is doing that. After some time, they are having a meeting. There, Okusora informs them that the parts they obtained earlier have come from the black market. The black market has a lot of illegal stuff that's banned in Kivodos, Many clubs that are not recognized by the General Student Council are active there, so it's a dangerous place. The girl informs her friends that Problem Solver 68 also goes there frequently as well. It seems like this gang wants to take over at their school, just like the Helmet Gangster does. Takanashi feels that the way they are attacking them, there must be some conspiracy behind it. Seems like this matter is getting serious, hence they all become concerned. INA suggests to them that they should investigate the connections between all these things. This way, they might get an idea about what's happening. After some time, they are wandering in the black market. They notice that the market is looking quite bustling. Hence, Shiroko can't believe that such a place beyond the control of the General Student Council can grow this big. At this, Takanashi reminds her that they are always in Ebidos. 
Further, she tells the girl that there are a lot of other places like this out there. Shiroko becomes curious, hence, she asks Akanashi if she has been to places like these before. Thus, the girl shakes her hand and replies that it's her first time at a place like this as well. However, she states that there is a lot of weird stuff in other districts, like a giant water tank of a stadium, called an aquarium. She excitedly tells her friend that she wants to visit these places one day. On the other hand, Ayane is watching her friends from the drone, and she tells them to be careful at the market. Suddenly, they hear a shooting sound there. It appears, one girl is running from the gang of masked girls, as they are shooting at her and telling her to stop. However, the blonde-haired girl is looking frightened by them. On the other hand, Ayane is watching this on camera, and she notices the girl's uniform. Ayane realizes that this girl might be a student of Trinity. Meanwhile, the blonde-haired girl stops in front of Takanashi's group. There, Nanomi asks the girl if she is fine. Thus, the masked girls angrily tell them that they want the girl, because she is a student at Trinity General School, which is the richest school in Kivodos. Hence, these girls are planning to kidnap the blonde-haired girl, and then they will ask for a large ransom. It appears these girls are greedy. They even offer Takanashi's friends that if they are interested, then they can join them too. Shiroko loses her temper and starts shooting at those girls. Within a second, she defeats the girls and tells them that they are not interested in their shitty offer. After that, the blonde-haired girl says thank you to all of them. She then introduces herself as Ajitani Hifumi. Hence, Takanashi asks the girl why she is in a place like this, which is so dangerous. Funnily, the girl is looking embarrassed as she states that she is looking for something that can no longer be bought. However, she heard that there are dealings going on in the black market. At this, Shiroko and Takanashi point out all the illegal things that are happening in the market, like illegal firearms and chemical weapons and many more. However, Ajitani shakes her head and nervously says that it's Pororo's limited product. After that, she happily shows them a picture of a stuffed doll. Apparently, the Pororo dolls are limited to only 100 pieces. Nanomi also becomes excited about the doll, as she likes them too. After that, both girls start gossiping about the dolls and share their love for them. Meanwhile, Takanashi is feeling awkward as she doesn't understand what these girls are even talking about. After that, Sensei informs the girl that they are also looking for something that is hard to get. But they heard that it's sold here. That's why they are here. Hence, Ajitani informs them she heard that this place is not only a lawless place beyond the control of the General Student Council, but also that there are a lot of companies doing illegal things there. There are even special financial and security agencies there. Further, she informs them that she heard that they should avoid the security forces there. After hearing this, Takanashi happily asks the girl if she can help them looking for the item they need. Funnily, Ajitani screams since she doesn't want to risk her life anymore. This girl is even more overdramatic than I am. On the other hand, Team Problem Solver 68 is looking at the dark bank of the black market building. There, Kayoka asks her president if they are really going to take out a loan there. Kuromi also points out that the interest must be high there. Funnily, Hina teases her president that first they have to see whether Aru is able to pass the assessment or not. Wish I could also roast my boss like this. Aru gets embarrassed at this, but she quickly recovers and replies that she will complete the assessment. After that, they walk inside the building. On the other hand, Ajitani has brought Takanashi's group in the Taiyaki shop to find the illegal parts that they are looking for. Sadly, they can't find the parts and it seems all the information has been deliberately hidden. Even the companies there won't do this. Hence, the girl explains to them that the companies there are committing evil things openly, so they would not do such things sneakily. She then points out the dark bank of the black market and states it's the dark bank known even there in the black market. It appears that nearly 15 c o of crime-related financial assets in Kivodos are flowing in there. They obtain money through various crimes, such as robbery, kidnapping, and embezzlement covered into weapons, and they use them in other crimes. So the vicious circle continues to develop. Apparently, banks are criminal organizations there. At that moment, they notice a black market guard on the motorcycle. The girl informs them that these guards are the highest level of security forces there. Shiroko notices that they are escorting the cash transport vehicles. Suddenly, the vehicles stop in front of the bank, and a robotic man goes to the bank. On the other hand, the girls become shocked to see the bank employee who came to their school to collect the money. The robotic man hands over the briefcase to the bank guard and informs him that this is the many they collected this month. Seeing that, Shiroko realizes that Kaiser Loan has connections to the dark bank. Ajitani becomes shocked after hearing the agency's name. 
After that, she informs them that the agency is the loan shark run by the infamous Kaiser Corporation. Apparently, this corporation is a diversified company that navigates the area between illegal and legal. She then asks them if they get a loan from there. Hence, Takanashi hesitantly replies that it's a long story. Thus, they realize that they take cash just because this way it's not easy to slip up. Shiroko is looking angry at them, because it seems like all their money is providing them with criminal funds. However, Ayane tells them that they don't have any evidence to prove that Kaiser Loan has transferred their money into the dark bank. At this, Ajitani states that they might have proof of collection when they collect the money. So as long as they find the related records, they will have the evidence. But the documents should be all in the bank, so they have to find a way to get them. But the banking security system is very solid. Suddenly, Shiroko becomes serious and states that there is only one way to do this. At this, all her friends understand her plan and they think their plan can work there. However, Ajitani becomes confused as she doesn't know what they are talking about. Hence, she asks them. Therefore, Shiroko takes out a face mask and announces that they have to rob the bank. Girl said this with all the enthusiasm of someone answering a math question. Since he doesn't like her idea, hence he tells her to think of another way. At this, Shiroko replies that she just wants to get the evidence of their crime so it's fine. Ayane knows the girl will not listen to anyone. That's why she agrees with her plan. Funnily, Shiroko stands beside Ajitani and tells her that they didn't prepare her mask because this all happened so suddenly. Girl, who cares about the mask when you are going to rob the bank? Funnily, Ajitani becomes terrified that she also has to go with them. Nanomi then puts a bag on the girl's head to cover her face, since they don't have a mask for her. After that, Sensei also agrees to go with them, because he feels it is wrong when their money is being used for crime. Hence, they all wear their mask and they look ready to conquer the work as they are holding their weapons. On the other hand, Aru tells the robotic employee that they are in desperate need of available funds. However, the man tells her that they can't help her this time. Hence, Aru gets angry at him and tells him that they have an official office, so why can't they give them a loan? At this, the man answers that their office is rented and their assets are firearms only. That's why they can't provide her with a loan in this case. However, he tells them that if she has assets that can be used as collateral, or if she has sufficient credit, then they can offer her a loan. Funnily, he tells the girl that she should start a part-time job. Aru starts fuming with anger, as she gets pissed off. Hence, she thinks of robbing the bank and making a big scene. However, she looks around and realizes that it won't be a good option, since the black market guards are there. Hence, she feels bad that she doesn't have guts to fight with the black market. The girl feels embarrassed, because it's her dream to be the greatest criminal in Kivodos. Hence, all this loan stuff is making her crazy. She realizes that this is not what she wants. She wants to be a tough criminal. At that moment, all the lights shut down there and suddenly, a huge explosion occurred. After that, Shiroko and her friends come there wearing masks. The lights come back again. Meanwhile, Shiroko and her friends point guns at everyone. She then tells everyone to drop their weapons and lie down on the ground. All the girls take a certain part of the bank to deal with. After a while, everyone is lying down and it seems like their plan is working. Funnily, Takanashi calls Ajitani Miss Faust and she tells her to command everyone. The girl becomes surprised as she asks her if she is Miss Faust. Hence, Nanomi tells the poor girl that she is not calling her. Apparently, Miss Faust is their leader. After that, she excitedly informs her that she is Christina. On the other hand, Kayoka and her friend are watching them from a corner. They recognize that these girls are the students of Abidos High School. Serika wonders if they are here to take revenge. At this, Kayoka tells her that they are not their target. Meanwhile, Shiroko points the gun at the employee and tells him to put cash in the truck. Hence, the robotic man pleads that they will give them everything. At this, Shiroko tells him that they only want the collection of records. Funnily, Aru is watching the girl with fascination. She feels like they are her dream models as they dare to rob the black market bank. She feels like crying from happiness as she thinks that they are real criminals. On the other hand, the robotic man gives the bag to Shiroko and begs her to spare their life. After that, the girls retreat from the bank. Meanwhile, the bank employee yells at the guards to catch them and informs the black market guards. After some time, the girls successfully broke through the blockade area. They then open the bag and see that it is filled with money. Shiroko then takes out the document. Meanwhile, Serika sees that there is a lot of money and she thinks that they should take the money. However, others don't seem to agree with her. Surprisingly, Serika looks sad as she tells her friends that they worked hard to earn this money but it ended up in that dark bank. 
and even if they let it aside, then this money might be used by criminals to buy weapons, so that's why she doesn't think there is anything wrong with stealing from bad people. Nanomi also agrees with Surika, and she suggests that they can use this money for the right reason. Takanashi says that all they need is the document, not the money. And if they think stealing money from bad people is not a big deal, then what about next time? This will become their habit and when the next time some problem comes, then they might commit acts that they should not. That's why she doesn't want her friends to go through this. Hence, they decide to take the document only. Suddenly, they see Aru coming their way. Thus, they all wear their face masks. The girls are wondering what Aru is doing there. Aru then compliments them for their robbery skills. After that, she excitedly states that she also wants to be free from the law and become a criminal. She then asks them about their names, as she states that she wants to engrave their heroism in her heart today. Nanami becomes excited and tells her that they are the masked swimsuit gang. ANA gives his team the shocking news that the money from the Kaiser loan is going to the Helmet Gangster. This means those guys from the Helmet Gangster are using students' money to prepare their weapons. Hence, they all become pissed at them. After some time, they examine the document detailing the Kaiser loan's collections. They realize that the 7.88 million yen they lent to repay the school loan was actually used by the company to fund mission aid for the Katakata Helmet Gang. That means the company gave the Katakata Helmet Gang 5 million to take their team down. Therefore, they realize that their real enemy is the Kaiser loan. However, they can't seem to understand why the company would do that. Because if their school goes bankrupt, then the Kaiser Lawn won't get their money back. Shiroko seems to understand the reason behind it. Hence, she tells her friends that she doesn't think it's only Kaiser Lawn involved. The girl thinks that the company must be working with the Kaiser Corporation. Thus, they all become worried about this matter. After some time, they say thanks to Hifumi for helping them. However, the girl says that it's fine. After that, she tells them that she will tell this to the tea party. Since they could be evidence of Kaiser Corporation's collusion with criminals and antisocial forces, Hence, they should do something to stop all this. Nanomi becomes happy as she knows that if the Trinity Student Council can help them, then everything will be alright. However, Hifumi is surprised by the fact that Shirakoa team is bearing a debt of 1 billion. Funnily, Serika becomes offended. Hence, she states that it's not that much. It's only 960 million. Surprisingly, Hoshino comes forward and tells them that the Tea Party already knows about this matter. Gehenna and Millennium also have already known. Hence, Hifumi worried that if they already knew about this, then why didn't they do anything? Hashino informs her that they all turn a blind eye on purpose. Hifumi still can't seem to believe this. Therefore, Hoshino says to the girl that the world is not that simple, and if she tells the tea party about this matter, then they all might get into trouble. Further, she explains to her friends that Abido's high school is now facing the danger of shutdown. Trinity and Gehenna are both large schools, so they can't influence them. At this, Hifumi understands that the girl is right. Because if other schools do bad things in the name of support, then Abidos can't stop them. However, Nanomi and Serika still don't believe this. Hence, they think that the other schools might help them. Girls people are not that good. Hoshino tells them that there is always a possibility of an accident. So it's better to be cautious. At this, Sensei suggests that there must be a solution for all this. Funnily, Serika scolds the boy for not being confident in this matter. After that, they argue with each other. Meanwhile, Hoshino is worried about the school. Hence, she notices that Shiroko is watching her. Therefore, she hides her worries from the girl and gives a small smile to her. Apparently, Hoshino doesn't want to get them worried. That's why she teases Hifumi to make their mood better. After a while, Hifumi says goodbye to them, and then she goes from there. After that, Hoshino tells her friends to take some rest. Hence, they all go home. The next day, Aru comes to her office. Funnily, she is looking like a zombie. Hence, Mutsuki asks her if she was up all night. She then informs her boss that they have a plan for their next attack on Abydos. At this, Kyoko tells Aru that they would plant bombs in dozens of places and blow them up as they pass by. Funnily, Aru is sleeping there, while the girls are telling their plans to her. However, Kyoko notices that the girl is sleeping. Hence, she calls her. Aru wakes up at this, and she then tries to act like she wasn't sleeping all this time. Girl, we were even able to hear your snores, so you better not lie about this. Mutsuki then suggests that they should use the money in the bag as a fund. However, Aru denies this and states that they would not touch that money. Since it was accidentally dropped by the masked gang, that's why she can't use them. Funnily, 
Aru thinks that if they use this money, then it will damage their reputation as criminals. At this, Mutsuki suggests that if that's the matter, then they should ask for a deposit from the previous client. However, Aru states that she will not take the deposit since it's their rule because Aru feels that the commission shall be collected upon success, otherwise they won't be able to achieve the ideal they pursue. Funnily, Aru is still smitten by the Shiroko's group. Kayoko then suggests that they should go back to Gehenna. At this, Mutsuki points out that those perfect team members there won't let them go. Kayoko realizes that the girl is right, the perfect team is indeed quite troublesome. More than that, they might be the strongest in Kivodos, but that is because of the president of perfect team members, Hina. She represents more than half the power of the perfect team member. That means, other than Hina, the other team members are no big deal. Hence, Kyoko feels that it's not a problem as long as they have a plan. However, Aru stands up and tells them they can't go back to Gehenna now, since they have to become good criminals first. At that moment, Haruka enters the room and she then goes to Aru and tells her that she will do everything for her. After that, they go out to eat lunch. In Abido's high school, Nanomi tells Sensei that Hoshino has changed. Nowadays, she is always sleeping. Though the first time Nanomi met her, she was always running around. Further, Nanomi tells the boy that when Hoshino enrolled, there was a senior who was the last president of Abido's student council. After that person left, Hoshino took over everything, even though she was only in the first grade. Thus, Nanomi feels that maybe that's the reason Hoshino hates to be associated with another school. The girls think that Hoshino has changed a lot, and it's because of Sensei. On the other hand, Aru is eating ramen with the girls. There, the owner tells Aru that he is giving them a discount since they are Surika's friends. At this, Aru remembers the time she spent with Surika and other girls. Strangely, Kaokam notices that the food of this restaurant is so good, yet it's empty. Since there are no customers there, thus Mutsuki feels that it's because this area is dangerous. Funnily, Aru starts yelling that they are not friends with Surika. Further, the girl feels that she can't enjoy it because the criminal she aspires to be cannot indulge in pleasure. Funnily, Haruka says that she understands what Aru wants, hence she states that they need to destroy this shop. Aru becomes horrified by the girl's wild thoughts, hence she tries to stop the girl. But Haruka already pressed the button for the bomb. Ayane worriedly informs her friends that she got an update about an explosion. Hence, she informs them about the location. At this, they all become terrified. After that, they hurriedly go there to save the owner. At the explosion scene, Aru stands up and asks her friends about Haruka. Thus, Kyoko tells her that she doesn't know Haruka has set a bomb in Shiba Seiki Ramen. Further, she explains that this location wasn't part of their plan. Aru becomes horrified at this. After that, Haruka comes there and explains that she set up the bomb at the restaurant just as a precaution. Meanwhile, Aru is looking around the scene and she feels bad about this. However, Mutsuki says to her that she has achieved her goal of becoming a villain, because the boss of the ramen shop was so kind, but they blew him up. So without a doubt, they are ruthless villains. However, it doesn't seem like Aru likes being a villain here. At that moment, Shiroko, Serika, and Nanomi come there with their weapons. Aru is panicking as she can't seem to decide what she should do. Meanwhile, her friends are ready to fight with Shiroko's team. Aru decides to act like a villain because she doesn't want to appear weak in front of them, hence she accepts that they blew up the shop. On the other hand, Ayane informs them that the owner is fine. Serika is pissed at Aru hence, they decide to fight with them. However, at the moment, the bomb starts to explode there. In this process, Aru gets injured. It appears that Perfect is the one who exploded the bomb. Hina has come there with her entire team. Thus, Ayane and her teammates know the situation is dangerous, hence they have to do something. Meanwhile, Lori is impatient, since she just wants to attack them. However, Chinatsu tells the girl to calm down. She tells her that they should explain the situation to them, and then they have to confirm what they did. After that, they negotiate, and if that doesn't work, then they will attack. Hence, Lori moves to talk to them. On the other hand, Aru wakes up and she looks around. Kayoka tells her that they should leave this area, since the perfect team is there. At this, Aru becomes shocked and she shouts loudly. However, Kayoka stops her midway and tells her to keep her voice down, otherwise they will find them. Whereas, Surika asks her friends if they still can't contact Hoshino. Ayane tells her that Hoshino usually doesn't take this long to answer but today she isn't answering. At that moment Lori comes there. Nanomi worriedly asks the girl why she is there. Lori states that a few violators had escaped here, 
and they wanted to punish them. Thus, Sarika asks her if she means Problem Solver 68. Laura replies that she is right, they are here for them. After that, she tells them that they are not here for them, so they should just retreat. However, Sarika asks the girl what if they don't agree. Nanomi warns her friends that fighting with this team could lead them to huge losses. Ayani seems to agree with her since the perfect team is here with a lot of soldiers, and they all have weapons. Meanwhile, her friends are only a few, so they should retreat for now. Surprisingly, Shiroko states that they will not retreat. Serika also thinks the same as she thinks that they have to get revenge on those Problem Solver 68 girls since they hurt the innocent ramen shop boss. All the girls get ready to fight them. Thus, Shiroko tells the girl that they will not retreat. On the other hand, Aru and her team are watching them from the other side of the car. Aru can't believe that these girls turned down the request of the perfect team. Haruka tells her boss that they should leave this place. However, Aru tells her that regretting what she has done for the rest of her life isn't the style of her outlaws. Letting others take the blame for herself and running away isn't the style of outlaws either. And the outlaws, she believes, will never waver in their beliefs, no matter who they are facing. That's why she isn't running away from here. Hence, her teammates are surprised by her president's bravery. Meanwhile, Lori shoots at Sarika, but luckily, Sensai protects her. After that, Shiroko and Lori start fighting. Nonomi also joins them and she is firing at Lori. However, Lori is smart as she kicks the girl. Sensei comes there and he tells the girl to stop. Lori asks the boy if he is from Shale, but the boy didn't answer her. Lori is now standing with Chenatsu. Sensei seems to know Chenatsu. Thus, Chenatsu tells the boy that if she knew he was here, then they would have not done this. She looks guilty as she states that it was a miscalculation. Ayane then introduces herself that she is from the Abidos Foreclosure Task Force. After that, she asks them why they are there. At that moment, a woman's hologram appears there and she greets the Shiroko team. After that, she introduces herself as an administrative officer of Perfect Team in Gehenna Academy and her name is Ama Ako. She then says sorry for being rude and for attacking them earlier. After that, she scolds Lori for not following the orders properly. Surprisingly, Lori gets scared by this woman. Trust me. Bosses are another version of Annabelle. The woman informs the Shiroko's team that they are only there to catch those in their school who broke the rules. Thus, she asks for their help. At this, Sensei questions the woman if she is asking for their help or threatening them. Ama evilly laughs at this and says that for now, they are asking for help. Surprisingly, Ayane replies that they won't help them. And this is their autonomous zone. That means they are breaking the rules by starting a war here. Girls with glasses are always smart don't believe otherwise. After that, she tells her that they should be the ones to decide how to deal with Problem Solver 68. Ama looks wicked, as she commands her team to fight. Surprisingly, someone throws a bomb in their direction. Hence, it blasts and black smoke appears there. Aru's team comes there and they are now fighting with Lori's team. Ama becomes shocked after seeing Aru there. Meanwhile, Serika gets angry at Aru. Surprisingly, Aru apologizes to them. Meanwhile, Ama commands her team and they are now surrounding them. After that, the woman stated that she wasn't expecting to meet Sensei with the Problem Solver 68 team here. However, Kayoka tells the woman to drop her act, since it didn't happen suddenly. Surprisingly, Kayoka reveals that Ama wanted this to happen and her target is Shale. From the beginning, she was aiming for Sensei. Finally, Ama drops her act and praises the girl for her smart thinking. After that, she reveals that it all started at a tea party. Gehenna Academy and Trinity General School have had a hostile relationship for a long time. Their student council obtained a report on Shale. However, at that moment, Ama had no idea what Shale was at the time. Since the tea party had this information, therefore they needed to get to know it. But Ama then remembered a report written by Chinatsu, and then she confirmed it. So after the student council president left, Sensei took over the unknown organization. Ama doesn't know what impact this will have, so until the Eden Treaty is successfully signed, they have to get Sensei on their side. Shiroko's team becomes alert and they state that they protect Sensei. Surprisingly, Aru's team is also willing to fight with them. Serika then introduces herself to Aru and she tells her that if they are willing to fight together, at least they know their names. After that, they all tell each other their names. Sensei then tells the perfect team that they will not accept their offer. They all then get their positions and start shooting. Both teams are helping each other to fight the enemy. These girls are an absolute force to be reckoned with, as they are kicking the other team's butts. Luckily, they have almost defeated all of them. 
and now there is only one area left, which Shiroko and Aru are handling. Hence, Shiroko is fighting with the other team. Meanwhile, Aru is protecting her and also, she is attacking them. At last, they defeated the other team. Ama realizes that they won't give them Sensei. However, she is still arrogant and ready to fight with them. Surprisingly, Hina comes there and after seeing her, Ama gets panicked. Hina tells the girl to explain everything to her. At this, Ama says to her that they are here to catch misbehaving students. However, Kina informs her that the Problem Solver 68 team isn't here. It appears, Aru and her teammate have smartly sneaked from there, and they are now hiding behind a car. Hina then scolds Ama and tells her to go back to school. Hoshino then comes there and says that she was taking a nap. She is looking completely relaxed, while facing Hina. She then asks her why she is here with so many people. Hina also knows Hoshino and tells the girl that she has changed a lot since first grade. Hoshino gets surprised that the girl knows her. Thus, Hina informs her that when she was in the intelligence division, she learned something about those students who need to pay special attention to. Hina thought the girl left Abidos after what happened. But here she is. On the other hand, Hoshino is acting like she isn't affected by all this. Surprisingly, Hina tells her team to retreat, since they started the war without notice and caused a disturbance in the other academy. She then apologizes to Shiroko and her friends for what her team did. After that, she goes close to Sensei and says something to him. She then leaves from there with her team. After that, Shiroko asks the boy about what the girl told him. Hence, the boy informs them that the girl said, in the abandoned desert of Abydos, the Kaiser Corporation is plotting some sort of conspiracy. Hoshino then tries to act innocent, as she asks them about what happened. Thus, all her friends scold her for not being with them. Meanwhile, Shiroko is suspiciously looking at Hoshino. She knows the girl is hiding something. Hoshino is lying in bed, and it is almost 8 a.m. She is sad and getting late for school. She remembers that she met a strange man and is working for him. Sounds like a job that happens in the dark alleyway. The man tells Hoshino that he wants her to do something which makes her angry. But when the man offers her the transfer agreement, she gets quiet because she needs it. The alarm starts ringing and Hoshino gets out of bed. She is sad because she has to follow the man and go against her will. What having only fans is like. Shiroko is riding a bicycle in the city and she reaches the destruction site and sees a suspicious bag there. On the other side, Echo is riding on a sheet and gets tired of it because she doesn't think it is going to turn out like punishment. Hina asks her if she is slacking which makes her nervous. She tells Eiko that she has just written on 200 sheets, but she is going to write on 1,000 sheets in total. Akko explains to her that it is just a metaphor to show that she has some serious introspection. Hina asks Echo about Hoshino, but Eiko tells her that she has only met her once when she was at the investigation division. Hina says that the Internal Defense Bureau has found out that Hoshino has access to an elite and is a potential threat. Akko isn't sure if Hoshino is an evil person, and Hina tells her not to judge someone by their appearance. She tells Eiko that she remembers Hoshino being an ex-militant and a skilled member of the squad. Akko is confused because she has analyzed Hoshino's previous combat experience but couldn't find anything. Hina already knows about this and tells her that it might be because the intelligence division doesn't see Hoshino as a threat anymore. She tells Eiko not to stop and to keep writing. Hina spreads her wings and knows that Hoshino is still at Abidos. Haruka, Hoshino, and Kayoka are packing all the luggage. Aru is sad because they lost the fight and the landlord told them to move out of the office. Haruka and the other girls know that Aru hates to move on. They load their weapons and get ready. But Aru is emotionally attached to the phone and doesn't want to leave it behind. At that time, Haruka tells all of them that they should not give up as they haven't lost the battle. Aru gets motivated and tells the others that they are outlaws and should not give up, deciding that they will come back one day. Suddenly, Kayoka tells Aru that the landlord has told them they have to move out at once, which means they all have to sleep on the street. Aru is shocked but they don't have any choice, so they move out. Hoshino tells Aru that she doesn't have to be sad because they have already slept on the road before. She explains to her boss that they are just returning to the original life they lived long ago. Aru tells herself that they are moving ahead and not behind. Haruka asks them where they all should go and suggests that they should go back to Gehenna. Kayoka isn't happy about it and looks at Haruka angrily. Shiroka comes to them on her bike and asks if they are moving out. Aru panics when she sees her and asks if she has come again to fight them. 
Shiroka, nervous, tells them that she is just biking around and happens to see them. Haru and Kayoka are ready to fight Shiroka, but Haruka steps forward, lowers her head, and apologizes to Shiroka. Haru is nervous and surprised. Shiroka forgives them, but not for the ramen shop incident. She also asks Aru as she left the bag of money in front of the bank. Aru blushes and tells her that they wouldn't take anyone else's money even if they are outlaws. Shiroka asks Aru where they are going, and Aru confidently tells her that they will go where the client asks them. Shiroka says that she delivered the money to her boss, and Kayoka thanks her for it. Haruka and Hoshino are ready to go but have no idea where they should go. Shiroka tries to help them, but Aru rejects her and says that they are still outlaws. In the end, Shiroka asks if they will meet again, and Aru, heart pounding, tells her that if the ramen shop gets back in business, they will meet again. After Shiroka leaves, Aru and the others decide to go toward where the sun is setting. Ayane, Nanomi, and Serika come to meet their boss Shiba in the Ebidos clinic. They are all worried about Shiba as he is injured, but he tells them that he just has some scratches. Nanami is sad about what happened at the ramen shop, and Shiba apologizes because she lost her part-time job. Nanomi tells him that it isn't about her, she is just sad about what happened to the shop. Shiba tells them that he is going to close the shop anyway. Ayane and the others are shocked. Shiba says that he got the notification of withdrawal, so he is thinking of closing the shop. Serika is confused because she knows that the building should be under Ebidos High School. Ayane is sure that the building was bought by someone and suspects it is Kaiser Corporation. Serika tells them that they should investigate it. Serika also tells Shiba that he should not think of closing the shop ever again, and he agrees with her. Shiba tells the girls that he received a bag from Shiroko with a lot of money. The girls start smiling and tell him that the money is from good people and he should not worry about it. They suggest he should reopen the ramen shop with that money. Hashino meets Sensei on the roof of the school building. They start talking, and Sensei tells her that he is a reliable person, so she can ask him for help whenever she wants. Hoshino is glad that she has so many friends, and tells Sensei that she is going to sleep again. After that, Sensei goes to meet Arona, who is sleeping at her desk. When he wakes her up, she panics and starts asking about her strawberry Nagasaki cake. She is going to eat it all at once, and is apparently in her dream. Sensei tells her that she should eat one bite at a time and promises her that he will get her a Nagasaki cake, both strawberry and banana. Arona apologizes to her teacher and thanks him. Sensei asks Arona to look into Kaiser Corporation for him because he is sure they are up to something suspicious. He also asks Arona about Hoshino but then decides to look into her by himself. He thanks her for everything she has done, and she tells him that she is the main executive division and his secretary too. After that, Sensei goes into the office where Ayane, Nanomi, Serika, and Hoshino are already there. Hoshino looks dull, and Ayane tells Sensei that Abidos might have lost ownership of the land. She says that Shiba told them that Abidos High School, including his ramen shop, is no longer under Abidos. She also mentions that this happened several years ago, and the actual owner is unknown. Sensei gets worried, knowing that it is likely Kaiser Corporation. Everyone panics and starts arguing with each other knowing that Kaiser Corporation has attacked them before. Hashino starts yawning and changes the topic by telling everyone that the cloud in the sky looks like a whale. Ayane tries to stop her and remind her that they are discussing important things, but Nanomi stops Ayane and they all start looking at the sky outside the window. Hoshino clearly knows that arguing isn't going to solve anything, so she wants to have fun with the others. After some time, they all start wondering if the cloud looks like a dolphin or a jellyfish, Sensei starts laughing because he finds it funny. Later, the girls leave everything to Sensei and tell him that they are going to follow him. Hoshino is still confused about whether to betray Abidos or support them. Kaiser Corporation blackmailed her, which made her sad. Shiroka gives all the money she found at the ramen store to Shiba and forgives the outlaws. In the evening, Shiroka is in her room and hears a noise coming from her bedroom. She brings out her gun and gets ready for a fight. She sees cookies flipped over on the floor and a crow eating them. The crow flies away and she closes the door but notices something weird in her room too. Serika and others have come to the aquarium to enjoy their day. Hence, they all thoroughly enjoy watching the sea creatures. Serika and Ayane are memorized after watching the fishes. They are wondering how the fish breathe in water. Hence, Hoshino explains to them about how fishes breathe in water. All the girls are listening to her carefully and they all are impressed with her intelligence. After that, they begin exploring the various fish. Meanwhile, Hoshino explains the unique features of each species to them. 
Funnily, Serika, Hoshino, and Shiroko are feeling tempted to eat these fishes. After a while, they compare the fishes to Hishino, hence, Nanomi thinks that Hoshino is like a penguin, since they both are adorable. After some time, they are enjoying the dolphin show. While watching the show, Shiroko becomes serious and tells Hoshino that she wants to talk to her. Later, both girls are standing alone in a corner and there, Hoshino asks her friend what she wants to talk about. Funnily, she teases Shiroko as she wants to confess her feelings to her. However, the girl bluntly says no and crushes Hoshino's not-so-innocent feelings. Ouch, maybe we should make funeral arrangements for Hoshino's crushed pride. Both girls are watching the fishes. At that moment, Hoshino tells Shiroko that after watching the dolphin's performance, she feels like Shiroko is very much like a dolphin. At this, the girl asks her why she thinks that. Hence, she tells Shiroko that she is cute and agile, just like a dolphin. Then, Hoshino asks Shiroko whom she thinks she resembles. After thinking about it, Shiroko replies that Hoshino resembles to whale. However, Hoshino doesn't seem to agree with her choice. But Shiroko explains that a whale swims while it sleeps, and even up close, we can't get its entirety. And also, the whale always holds its breath. Further, Shiroko tells the girl that while they were fighting earlier, she said that she was taking a nap. But Shiroko knows it was a lie, and also the girl knows that Hoshino is hiding something from them. Hence, she tells Hoshino that she wants to help her, just like she helped her before. Therefore, Shiroko wants to know what she can do for her. At this, Hoshino looks down and says that Shiroko is a good kid. Surprisingly, she then hugs Shiroko and tells her that she really likes her. Girl needs to control her hormones. Sensei, Nanomi, Serika, and Aene come back and see both girls hugging. Funnily, Hoshino tells them that Shiroko said she likes her the most. This girl likes to live in her fantasy world. After some time, they are in the toy store. Thus, they all are shopping there. Meanwhile, Shiroko is watching a dolphin toy. Hence, they all come to her and ask her if she likes something. Thus, she tells them about the toy she likes. However, it is very expensive. But Hoshino cheerfully states that Sensei will buy it for her. The poor guy melts in front of her cuteness and agrees to buy them whatever they like. After a while, they are standing outside and all the girls want to take a picture together. They also tell the boy to join them, but he feels shy to take a picture with them. At that moment, a blue-haired girl and a white-haired girl come there and tell the boy that they will take their picture. It seems like Sensei knows these girls as he is chatting with them. After that, the girls take pictures of Hoshino's group with Sensei. Later, they all go back home and all the girls are sleeping on the train. Meanwhile, Sensei is fondly watching them, and he wishes that they have more moments like this together. Later that night, while the other girls are busy with their own activities, Hoshino looks worried. She wonders if she is doing as good a job as Yume. The next morning, Shiroko is on her bicycle, and she is going somewhere. However, she sees Hoshino there. Thus, she goes to follow her in the dark alley. But she couldn't find her there. At that moment, a black car passes by, and Shiroko notices Hoshino inside it. While in the school, Serika, Nanomi, and Ayane are watching the picture they took yesterday. They are planning to upload these pictures to their Momotak group chat. Shiroko also comes there and she looks around to find Hoshino. But Serika informs her that the girl hasn't arrived yet. After that, Shiroko shows them the pictures that she took at the aquarium. Ayane suggests that they should go to the beach next time. Hence, the girls start making their plans. Suddenly, Hoshino comes there and cheerfully greets everyone. However, Serika gets angry at her for coming late. But the girl carelessly ignores her and states that she slept very comfortably yesterday since she was tired. After that, she asks them about what they are doing. Hence, Nanomi informs her that they are looking at the pictures they took at the aquarium yesterday. At this, the girl becomes happy and tells them to show her the pictures as well. At this, Ayane asks her if she hasn't taken any pictures. Hashina replies that she isn't good at high-tech stuff, so she didn't take any. Ayane doesn't seem to find her reason reasonable. Because taking pictures is not a high-tech job, Nanomi cheerfully tells them that she has taken a lot of pictures of everyone, so they don't have to worry about it. At this, Serika happily tells the girl that knowing she was busy taking pictures of others, she took some pictures of her like a good friend. Ayane has also taken Nanomi pictures for her. Thus, Nanomi becomes very happy with this sweet gesture from her friends. Hence, she hugs them tightly. Meanwhile, Hoshino notices that Shiroko is watching her suspiciously. Nanami then hugs Hoshino and Shiroko. After some time, they did the meeting for their work. After the meeting, Ayane and Serika go out together. 
Meanwhile, Nanomi goes to say goodbye to Sensei. Hoshino is also going to get some sleep. But Shiroko stops her and asks her what she was doing in the morning. Hoshino isn't letting go of her mask, as she lies again that she was sleeping and that's why she didn't go anywhere. She then asks Shiroko about what happened. Hence, the girl says to her that she thought she saw her on the streets this morning. At this, Hoshino becomes alert but she masks her emotions and acts natural. She tells the girl that maybe she got the wrong person for her, since there are a lot of students like her around there. Further, Hoshino tells Shiroko that she must have been tired, and that's why she mistook another person for her. After that, she tells the girl to rest. She then starts to walk away, but Shiroko holds her hand and asks her if she is hiding something from them. At the moment, Hoshino's bag falls to the ground. On the other hand, Nanomi is talking with Sensei. Suddenly, they hear a loud voice. Shiroko is tightly holding Hoshino's hand and asks her about the documents. However, Hoshino just plays it off and states that they are just documents, so she doesn't have to worry for now. However, Shiroko isn't satisfied by her answer and asks her what she means. At that moment, Nanomi and Sensei come there and anxiously ask them what they are doing. Shiroko hides the documents and says to give them a minute. However, Nanomi tells both girls that in the foreclosure task force, private secrets between two people are not allowed, since they are a community with a shared future. Shiroko is about to argue with her, but Hoshino interrupts her and says sorry to them. After that, she reassures them that it is not a big deal, so they don't have to worry. She then states that Shiroko is just overthinking it. Shiroko doesn't like her getting away like this, hence she calls her but Nanomi tells her to wait. She then tells the girl that everyone has some secrets they can't tell, so it's better to give them time. On the other hand, a villain like a man is sitting in a dark office and he states that now it's begun and it cannot be stopped. There is a transfer contract on his desk. Whereas, Shiroko is standing on the rooftop. There, Sensei comes there and asks her if she is okay. The girl then shows her the documents and after looking at the dropout documents, he becomes tense. Shiroko tells the boy that Hoshino is hiding something from them. Sensei knows the girl is feeling bad. Hence, he tells her that Hoshino trusts her but there must be a reason. She is not telling her. After that, he tells her to let him handle this for now, since he also wants to help Hoshino 